Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the process on installing hardwood treads and risers on a staircase. Uh, I think you'll find the video really helpful. I've got a lot of tips and techniques scattered throughout that I think will help you be a better carpenter. So watch through. I know it's a bit of a longer video, but I think uh, you'll find a lot of value in it. First thing you gotta do getting started, which is an absolute must, is to sand all of the treads and risers. I sand everything with the Festool ETS EC uh, slash five, which is the five millimeter stroke with a hard pad on it. It's an absolutely amazing sander. I love it, use it all the time. Highly recommend it. Next thing after I've got everything sanded, I'm going to move over to the table saw and I'm gonna put a five degree bevel on the back side of the treads and rip them to width. Setting the table saw to a five degree bevel is really, really important. You'll see why in a little bit. To figure out what the width you want to rip your treads at, you want to take the run plus an inch and a quarter or whatever number you want to use for your overhang. I went an inch and a quarter on this stairs. You always wanna keep your footsteps to a minimum. That's one of the secrets to efficiency. And by batch cutting all of my treads and risers at once, I'm gonna save a ton of footsteps going up and down the stairs. Getting started, the first thing I'm doing is getting everything staged on this stair landing. That way I can move with maximum efficiency as I get going on the stairs. I'm gonna pre-cut uh, all my risers and all my treads long and stack them on the landing and I'll actually be cutting everything right there with my HKC 55, which is an absolutely beyond fantastic tool for this kind of work. You'll see that the trash can that I bring up here actually works fantastic as kind of like a makeshift sawhorse uh, to cut the risers and treads on with the HKC 55. It works really well for that. All right, so now it's time to get started installing risers and treads. I'm gonna tackle about half of the staircase section here at a time. So about four treads and risers uh, installed and then move up and install four more of each. You might think that you'd be able to make square cuts on the miter saw on these treads and risers, but believe me, it just doesn't work that way. Each tread and riser has to be uh, custom cut at the right angle by using the stair tread gauge that I'm using here. It's really the only way to do it. Uh, trying to cut them square at the saw just really doesn't work. Any discrepancy in the framing throws everything off. I'm gonna start off by cutting a handful of risers. I'm using the uh, Collins stair gauges. Uh, this for me is the best ROI, return on investment tool you can get for this type of work. They're super inexpensive and very versatile because all you have to do is add a piece of one by two to them and you can get any length you want. I really like these because you can use a utility knife to make your mark and that gives you a really sharp line to cut to. Whereas if say I made my own jig out of MDF or plywood or something, it would be a lot harder to use a utility knife to mark with that. The combination of the Collins stair gauges along with the Festool HKC 55 is just a really amazing combo. You can make that super sharp cut line with the stair gauges and then all you have to do is plop your track right onto the riser or tread and it's just super easy to cut that right on the, that exact line. On all my risers I'm cutting them at a back bevel of 5 degrees off of the face and you'll see why that's so important in just a little bit. Now that I've got a handful of risers cut, it's time to install. I'm just gonna kinda go over the general principles of installing right now and then as we get up into this last four on the top flight, uh, we'll get a little bit closer up view of what I'm doing and some of the finer details. But one of the keys to success here, one of the goals is to have a stair that does not squeak. So we want to use a lot of adhesive. I'm using PL Premium. That's the adhesive I really like and I trust that it's going to bond well and do a good job. What you won't see here is very many nails being used at all. I don't want to Swiss cheese all this wood with nail holes. The risers and skirt boards are going to be painted and the treads will be stained. 
So that's where the adhesive really comes in as well as a good pressure fit as you're installing these. We don't want to have a bunch of nasty holes because the painters that often follow me use an oil-based nail filler and it just does not look good whenever it's stained. I'm using an 18 gauge two inch nail at the top of each riser to stringer connection and the main thing that that's doing is just keeping the riser at the proper height. At the bottom of the riser, I'm actually going to screw from the back side of the riser into the tread, so I really don't need to worry about nailing anything there. At this point, we've got a really nice tight joint between the riser and the skirt board, but there's going to be some pressure on that joint whenever I go and I push my treads in there. So what I'm doing is using a 3 inch GRK screw and I'm screwing through the framing stringer into the skirt board and that's gonna help keep that riser pulled nice and tight to my skirt board. All right, so I've got my risers in, a couple keys here. You'll notice that five degree bevel across the back right there, and then there is adhesive in, in that gap that's gonna bind that to the skirt board and uh, also helps ensure that this front stays nice and tight. Uh, the other thing that I was doing is I take a three inch screw and I drive it through the framing skirt board into the trim, or the framing stringer into the trim skirt board. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna help keep those two together as I push my treads down in there. Whenever I rip these risers to the height on the table saw, I take whatever my height is here and take about an eighth inch off of that. And then whenever I'm setting these, I'm looking to have, I don't know if you can see this or not, I want to have a slight gap up here on the front. This also has a five degree bevel on it, but I want the front edge of this to be nice and tight to my tread. And then keeping this just a little high will give me room to put some adhesive in there and get a really nice uh, tight uh, squeak free installation. I've got my GRK screws right here. I'm using uh, these are three and an eighth inch I believe to go through the framing uh, stringer into the skirt board and then I'm going to use these. These are about two or so and those will go through the back of the riser into the tread and get this uh, connection here nice and tight. Now it's time to cut some treads to length and this is where it is super important uh, to cut extremely precisely and accurately. And again, the combination with the Collins tread gauges and the Festool HKC just make it almost too easy. All you have to do is just get your tread gauges correctly uh, placed in the opening, tighten them up, plop it down on a tread, you know, use your utility knife, mark it, and it's as simple as dropping that HKC down on the tread, lining up your splinter guard with your cut line, and away you go. So, uh, it, you know, compared to using a miter saw or even some guys like drop in one one end of the tread in, scribe it, and then try and drop the other end in and scribe it. Just a, a royal time consuming pain compared to the system of just using these stair tread gauges in the HKC. It just makes it super simple. Again here, I'm just gonna batch cut a handful of treads at once and then I can install them all at once also. Uh, that seems to be the most efficient way to do it and keep your mind kind of an, on the right page throughout the process. The one tip I'll give you here is whenever you switch from cutting your risers to cutting your treads, it's really important to remember to reset your saw to zero degrees because like I said, I cut all my risers with a back bevel of five degrees and then if you forget to switch it over and you go and cut a tread nosing at five degrees, you ruined that tread probably. Using this process to cut the treads to length makes it super painless uh, whenever you're installing them. So I'm not gonna get into a lot of detail here because as we move up to the next section, I've got some more close-up shots. I think you'll be able to see a little bit better 
what's going on as we drop these in. The only fasteners I'm using on these treads is whenever I screw from the backside through the riser and then I'll lower my head down and look underneath the nosing to make sure that it's making good contact across the top of that riser. If it is, I'll trust the adhesive and the pressure fit. If uh, say the tread has a little bit of a twist in it and it wants to raise up off of the riser, I'll go ahead and I'll put a nail in there if need be, but I'm really trying to keep my nails to a minimum because it's really going to take away from the look and the quality of the stairs having exposed fasteners. All right, so about halfway, let's take a look at where I'm at here. I've got my HKC set up right here. You can see my off cuts, my work table, AKA the trash can and show you a little bit what I've got here results wise so far. So you can see everything is very, very nice and tight the whole way on both sides. That HKC saw is absolutely amazing for this job. You can see how tight I am to my skirt board and then also where my tread butts into the riser. That's just completely airtight, nothing there. screws from behind about three of them per riser is plenty because I've got adhesive in there that five degree back bevel on this tread gives a nice spot for that bead of adhesive to go and because it's beveled back this top will stay tight and it'll divert any uh, excess adhesive downward and outward rather than up into the area where we don't want any of that because these treads will be stained so everything's coming together real nice time to start the next section now uh, just start off by plopping my tread gauges inside this opening and what you want to do is just go back and forth loosening one side pushing it up against your skirt board go to the other side push it up against you might have to go back to the other side again, depending on how oblong the opening is. But um, once both sides are nice and tight, you just pull it off and then throw it on top of your riser. So now before I get ready to cut my riser, I'm always looking for where that five degree bevel is and that's my top side, as opposed to the other side, which is square, which will be the bottom. So I'm always gonna orient my top side uh, same direction as the stair, that way I don't confuse myself. I'll move this right over here, take my stair jig, and I referenced off the bottom, so I'll line up my bottom with the bottom edge here. After I've got the tip of my tread jig lined up with the bottom, I'll take my utility knife with a nice sharp blade. I'm going to try and put my knee up here and hold this down and just lightly score it is all it takes same thing for this side just a light score a knife is better than a pencil because it gives you a thinner line it's easier to cut to more precise so now I've got a nice thin line marked on both sides of my riser. I have my HKC here. It's angled at five degrees. Uh, that's important to get this really nice tight fit across the front. And again, allow adhesive somewhere to go on that backside. So now the beautiful thing about this saw is all I have to do is line up the rubber splinter guard right on that line and that's exactly where the blade's going to cut so you can be just super precise with this saw shameless plug here almost all of the tools that i mention in these videos i will have links to at the bottom of the video those are affiliate links and those help support the channel so if you think you might buy this saw or the stair gauges, be sure to click through those links and add to your cart through those links. 
So one note, I sand all these parts before I install them. So I don't want to be uh, walking on these treads. This was just some scrap quarter inch plywood that I cut down in advance. And I'm just plopping that down as I work my way up to uh, help protect things. So I've got my next three risers all cut and I need to caulk up here. So I'll try and show you. I'm using PL Premium. Uh, it's messy, but it's, it's the good stuff. It's the stuff that I trust. So first thing that I'm doing, I'm actually caulking on the skirt board and that's where the riser is gonna butt into with that five degree bevel. And that's gonna give me a, uh, a bond with the riser and the skirt board, which I want because that is just one more area that can squeak if it can move. So I wanna actually get adhesive in those areas. Getting ready to put the riser in. You see I've got my five degree bevel here and also there. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert one side come over here to the other side. Give it a nice tap, tap, tappy. Next thing I'm gonna do is set my height with this block. And you can see I'm, I'm a little low right now. I wanna see a gap up in here. So tap that up, that looks pretty good. Come over to the other side. That looks pretty good where that's at. So I am not using an excess of nails, just an 18 gauge with two inch nails. And the only nails I'm using are three nails to tack the top. And all that's gonna do is it's gonna keep it height wise where it's supposed to be. And that's really all I need. I'm not nailing anything into the tread. I'm just relying on the adhesive and as I go, I look underneath of the tread to make sure I'm nice and tight. Occasionally, the tread might be warped and I might have to put a couple nails in, but so far I haven't nailed anything here and I don't want to because the painters do a horrible job of filling nail holes and it'll, it'll just look bad. So I, I really rely heavily on adhesive. here as I'm getting ready to push this in I've got that bead of adhesive back in there and that's gonna go uh, absorb up into this five degree all right we're on the home stretch with these last few treads by now you know how to put the guides in and get your cut marks the main thing I want to do right now is remember to set my saw back to zero degrees so I don't screw up these last treads. I think that as trade tradesmen and trade business owners, our goal should be to work smarter, not harder. And we definitely shouldn't substitute trade skills with tools to make up for lack of trade skills. But there's also the point in time where we should be trying to make a system for everything we do that can be taught to an apprentice to get the job done as accurately, quickly, and easily as possible. And I feel like these tools just really do that well. There's nothing that I'm doing here that's rocket science. So I really feel like this is a great system for putting together a stair with hardwood treads. And I think uh, if I had to teach an apprentice, these tools are where, what I would start with. They're well worth the money spent. 
getting ready to put the riser on. You see I've got my five degree bevel here and also there. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert one side, come over here to the other side, give it a nice tap, tap, tappy. Probably the most important aspect of this install is actually the application of the adhesive. The thing that is gonna make this stair not squeak and be solid uh, for a long time is applying the adhesive in the correct spots right now. Failure to get adhesive where it needs to be is going to open up the potential for a squeak or something to go wrong. So that is why you see me using so much adhesive and placing it strategically uh, in these specific areas. Utilizing that five degree bevel on the back side of the treads, on the sides of the risers, and on the top edge of the risers provides the perfect place for that adhesive to sit and make a really solid bond connecting everything together. Also applying adhesive between the riser board and the stair tread in the skirt board is really important because that's probably the most likely area for a squeak to develop. You can see here as I drop this tread into place, as I drop it down, I'm gonna leave it back off of the riser behind the tread just a little bit until I have it firmly down and then I'm gonna push it back into that riser and that's gonna kind of squish that adhesive in there real nice and it's gonna make everything bond together really well. So it's Friday, I gotta take off, but I got a newel post that's gonna go right here. So I'm gonna leave this top tread and riser off for now. I gotta run a banister across there. So one other random tip. I use these quite a bit. I have a jig that makes them. If you happen to overcut something and it creates a gap or something goes kind of hairy, you can put some glue on a jig like this. And if you happen to have a little bit of a gap, you can put it in there. Let me put some glue on this. Glue the back only because the risers are gonna be painted, the treads will be stained. You can see there's a slight gap there. I'll just go ahead stick the wedge in there give it a little tap tap tappy So this will get painted, so a little bit of glue is no big deal. But uh, that took care of that gap for me. So the old wedge trick is a great one to have in your arsenal. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you found the video valuable. Hope you learned something. Hope it makes you better. Uh, links to the tools I used are in the notes below. Don't forget to like, give the video a thumbs up and subscribe and we'll look forward to seeing you on the next video.